<laughs> That's right, guys. Today's the day. It's time for the One Piece wallet. <laughs> Version two. Before we begin, let me explain briefly what tools you're going to need. It's very similar to last time. Most important thing is a decent knife. And while not necessary, a decent ruler is going to help you if you have one. This time around though, you are also going to need some basic stitching tools, although we're keeping this to the bare minimum. Simply a punch, some thread, and a couple of needles will do just fine. Optional extras include edge finishing tools. These are certainly not essential for making this wallet, but they're going to take your production value just up to that next level by being able to provide really nice smooth edges for your leather. These include an edge beveler, an edge burnisher, and edge finishing compound. I highly recommend using tokenol. First thing you gotta do is download, print, and cut out the template I provided in the description below. As before, it's is completely free, provided from me to you. Now lay out your leather and mark around the template with something pointy, whether that's a scratch all or a pencil or a needle or anything that's remotely sharp. The leather I'm using is known as Koala. No, not the bear. I'll link it in the description below. It's 1.2 millimeters thick, and you should be able to acquire something similar from your local leather supplier. I'll also be sure to drop an Amazon link to a more affordable and more easily accessible option in the description below. Once you've marked your pattern, take out your knife and cut out your shape. Try to do this as carefully as you can the first time around, because we're not gonna be doing a lot more processing on these edges. So the quality of your cuts here will determine the quality of the overall finish of your wallet. If you have edge finishing tools, now's the time to use them. Start by beveling the front and back edges of your wallet before applying tokenol to the edges and then burnishing with your edge burnisher. The quality of the finish that you'll receive will depend on the leather you're using and the amount of time that you're prepared to put into burnishing your edges. Now you're almost there, the final stage of this wallet is to simply stitch the sides together. All you need to do for this is to go back to your template and punch a total of four holes into your leather on the markings provided. I'm marking these now because I'm sort of working it out as I go along, but these will be provided on the template so you can mark these out at the very first stage prior to actually cutting out your overall shape. I forgot to mention earlier that you'll probably want a hammer for this, but if you don't have one, you could use a book, a brick, a piece of wood, whatever you have available to you. Then all you need to do is take your needles and thread and stitch through each hole individually. I essentially just did a saddle stitch except using a single hole. So I just passed each needle through three times. Then after the third, I cut off the thread and burnt the ends to seal it off. But I should say I wasn't actually that fond of this solution because I wasn't sure how well it would hold. So I found a better way of doing it for the final two stitches, which I'm gonna try and demonstrate now. After you've done the third stitch for a particular hole, take each needle and pass it back through halfway so that it comes back through inside the wallet, inside the fold of the wallet. So then what you end up with is two threads that are inside the pocket. What you can then do is you can knot these two together twice to create a double knot and then you can reach in there and cut off the ends that way. And then of course burn them as usual. What this does is it not only hides the burnt ends, which don't look particularly great from the outside, but it also secures those ends together. Since you haven't got a lot of stitches here, I don't particularly trust those simply cut off stitches to really hold. So this is a much sturdier solution and a much tidier one at the same time. There we have it guys, completed wallet. That wasn't any harder than the first one, right? So the big question is, how does it compare to the V1? This is the one that you guys have seen before. If you haven't, go watch that now because people really seem to like this design. I got so many requests to make these. I was going to, it was in the plan. Anyway, I've been using this one now for over a year, I think, and it served me extremely well. I've never felt the need to use anything else. So James, why make another one? Well, because I could. What I aimed to do with this one, the, the V2, was 
Could I use the same amount of leather, but holding twice as many cards? And yes, we can with a little bit of stitching. Is it better though? To be honest with you, I haven't decided yet. The the great thing about the V1 that I really liked was that it's it seals itself. You can throw it about, you can do whatever you want with it. Cards are not going anywhere. Now, second one, if I start moving this around, that, that happens, um, which, What's up guys, Future James here. I'm so, I, just, I couldn't leave you like that. I couldn't leave you thinking that the V2 was in any way inferior to the V1. So I went back to the drawing board, made a little alteration very briefly, and I now have the V2 too. You see, I just made one very simple alteration to the design, including this little flap here, which enables it to be closed to the point where, much like the first, ooh, much like the first, you can do whatever you like with it and nothing's gonna fall out. I also added this little magnet here, just out of interest. Of course you don't need the magnet, that's just a little extra I uh, added on top. But the point is you've got this little flap at the top which actually now holds it all closed, but more importantly, it seals the top end where those cards would be sticking out. So now it's very much sealed and I kind of like how it looks to be fair it's nice and compact it's very similar to the v1 but now instead we also have our bifold design so yeah i'll include the pattern for this one along with the other one again completely free so you can download that just be aware it might take me a couple of days to get that out because i only came up with this one literally just now i just made this anyway i feel better now that i've said that and that we have a solution to our card leaking problem if you made it this far guys thank you so much for stopping by i really do appreciate it if you found some value in this i, I hope you did then please feel free to drop this video a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel with the notification bell so that you can see all my future videos, many coming soon. I just realized my chair is banging on the cupboard. Anyway, take care of yourselves, guys. See you in the next one.